Well, I've got it ready now to start integrating the two models, but I need to add a bit of extra realism here as well. And at the moment, the only thing I've got which is reflecting any decisions in the, in the system or any adjustments are wages adjusting depending upon the level of employment. Well, this LOAC in a similar linear type decision making rule for capitalists in terms of how much they'll invest. And I'll just move some of this around. Again, we're going to improve our capacity to select objects in the future. We do have a bounding box approach right now, but rather than potentially causing any complications by doing that, I'll just make a bit of space here by moving each of these bits one bit by one. I'll move this one collectively. That's not so hard. So get that lot. Move them over here and then Ah. Okay, what's gone wrong there? Let's see. Edit, copy, remove. Russell, help. Okay. <laughs> Ungroup. Oh, yuck. That didn't work out well, did it? Anyway, these things will be improved over time. Let's see. It looked like it actually caused it to flip over there. So, right. Uh, okay, well, let's just flip that around again. Not a lot of harm done. Just a bit of time wasted, that's all. Again, these are the sorts of things you need to spend time fixing up. We don't as yet have an edit menu, as you can see up here. Uh, to let you copy, you've got to go and right click to who's copy. We don't quite yet support grouping uh, for copying because as soon as you group, you actually create a group rather than getting the option to copy a, a range of, of variables. These are all things which just take time to improve by working on the programming. And notice that's curved in the wrong direction here. Let's just straighten that. You can, that's a right click menu option and then drag it over here a bit more. So I've got a bit more space. So I want to get to the stage of explaining the level of investment on the rate of profit. So to do that, let's just move these guys forward a bit. And I'm going to delete this line connecting investment to profit, profit directly to investment right now, which is Goodwin's default assumption. Well, let's actually divide um, <coughs> profit by the level of capital. Now, again, what have I got here with capital? I've, haven't, I've got capital in terms of real capital, but not uh, nominal capital. So I'm going to, again, um, use an assumption which is a, uh, not quite realistic as yet, just to have the, the price of consumer goods and the price of capital goods being the same. Of course, at some stage, we can make that more realistic by having a function to determine the price of capital goods. But if I now, let's bring the multiply block down, multiply prices by real capital, and I then have the nominal value of capital, and if I now copy that K, bring it over here and divide the actual level of nominal profits by capital stock, I then get the profit rate. Well, let's indicate that by a new variable, which I'll call backslash pi for the Greek letter pi, and pi underscore r for rate. So we now have a profit rate. Now that's going to be what I'm used to determine the actual level of uh, investment and again we'll just simply mimic what we've got up here in this typical Milton Friedman idea of a, a Phillips curve with a linear relationship. Let's do the same here for um, the level of investment, make it a linear function of the rate of profit. So again making a bit of space and doing it one by one rather than causing any complications with blocks just as yet. So again, what I'll do is basically mimic the same equation here. So I'm going to have another variable called pi underscore, um, well, let's use the few favorite word of neoclassicals, equilibrium, and give it a value, say, of uh, 5% rate of profit. So we then subtract the actual rate from the equilibrium rate. We then have the gap, same as we've got up here. Uh, between what the profit rate is and what the one would make uh, capitalists um, neither uh, ecstatic nor depressed but basically content. And now I'm going to multiply that by another rate which I'll call pi underscore s for slope. Again the same thing as y underscore s up there and I'll make it capital as well. Give that a value of you know, say 5. 
and then multiply that by the gap, and that becomes the profit function, so underscore or backslash pi, and then curly brackets fn for function. So wire this up, so we have now profit slope, and now what you want to do is multiply that by the actual uh, well, yeah, we, what we're effectively saying with this function is what amount of uh, output will, will be devoted to in investment by capitalists. So copy y down here, multiply that function by the actual y, and that will give me the i. I'll just save this with a new name. Date modified here, there we go. Okay, but if it's C. And I'll just see what happens when I simulate this one. Still cycle, so I haven't actually changed anything so far, which again is good, but I don't want to just yet. In terms of characteristic, I think I'll stop there and go on to the next video.